All right, welcome to the show, Explorers. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you're watching from currently, or if you're watching this broadcast in the future, good day to you as well. My name is G.O.B., and you are watching Learn Around the World's Meet a Local. Today's local is Vanessa from Canada, our neighbor to the north, if you are watching from the U.S., Today's show is brought to you by Learn Around the World, bringing you virtual field trips and guest speakers, just like the show you're watching now, from all around our blue planets. Today is an interactive show, so that means you can send in questions via Twitter to hashtag LearnATW. Please use the hashtag LearnATW. I will not be following my handle. Um, we'll also have a geo quiz later in the show. So this is a half guess, half pay attention quiz um, that will include trivia questions about Canada and our guest speaker, Vanessa. She has volunteered to send a postcard all the way from Canada to the lucky winner. Um, our Kahoot ID today is 456921. Again, that's 456. 921. If you've never used Kahoot before, just go to the URL kahoot.it and it will ask for this ID. I will give it out again later. So if you do not jot it down already, that is okay. You are watching Learn Around the World and that means location matters. Where are we headed today? Well, we're headed up north, just above Lake Ontario. We're going to visit Vanessa, and Vanessa is in Toronto. Toronto is located right on the edge of Lake Ontario. So zoom in to get a better shot there. And it's extremely close. Now, Lake Ontario looks quite small right here on Google Earth, but it is quite large, I promise you. Uh, but we can see it's just across the way from New York that we're looking at. Uh, Vanessa also has been kind enough to get us some footage of Niagara Falls. So those of you who've never been before, Niagara Falls is an American landmark as well as a Canadian landmark because it's right on the border. So she's going to show us, I assume, uh, a video from the Canadian side, which I've only seen it from the U.S. side, and I hear it is a lot more beautiful from the Canadian side. Mm-hmm. All right, and so all those waters are just draining down from Lake Erie into Lake Ontario, and that's where we're headed today. So we're going to go ahead and um, meet Vanessa, and before we do, I do want to give a shout out first to uh, Mrs. Church's third graders. They are watching from Indianapolis, Indiana. So welcome to the show, Mrs. Church's class. We are expecting two on-camera guests. Either they're running late or one tried to join earlier, and um, I guess they're having technical difficulties. But without further ado, welcome to the show, Vanessa. Can you say hi to everyone? Hi, everybody. It's really nice to meet you guys, explorers. My name's Vanessa, like Brandon said, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. All right. And Vanessa, what do you do? do during your day-to-day uh, -day life? What is your job slash uh, non-job? What do you do? It's a great question, Brandon. That's a great question. Um, I am a teaching assistant at York University. It's one of the two biggest universities here in Toronto. So I teach English literature um, to first and second year here, university students. And I'm also a student myself studying for my PhD in English literature. All right. So there you have it, guys. So if you have any inquiries or questions about uh, getting your PhD one day, I know that's what you third graders think about all the time. <laughs> but if you have any of those outside of Canadian questions, be sure to send those in as well. So uh, we're going to show some pictures that Vanessa was kind enough to put together for us from uh, some of them may be personal. Some of them may be of locations or points of interest in Canada but no matter what you see on the screen or if you have any questions now go ahead and start sending those in um, so we can go ahead and get a good uh, bank of questions going that Vanessa can answer for us 
afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and show a couple of her pictures for you, and she's just going to narrate them um, for us. So I'm going to pull those up. Meow. All right. So we're going to check out some places around Canada and some personal pictures, I assume. So what are we looking at here, Vanessa? Uh, you are looking at my family. Um, you've got my mom on the left there. That's my younger sister beside her. There's me on the right and my dad sitting beside me. And we're at a, uh, we're at a winery in British Columbia. Uh, my parents live in British Columbia, which is the province the furthest west in Canada. That's where Vancouver is. Right. So for all of our U.S. students, that would be above the states of Washington, Montana, mm -hmm. okay, all the way on the far west side. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is, uh, this is my sister and I um, in the winter, which is uh, really long in Canada. We like to go snowshoeing, so every Christmas when I'm home. Um, this is in British Columbia, too. We like to go snowshoeing, but it's also really popular out here in Ontario. All right. Oh, that's me. Uh, that's me snowboarding. I'm not very good, but uh, most Canadians like to ski and snowboard because the winter is so long here. Um, I'm at a ski hill called Silver Star. Um, again, that's in British Columbia. But there's lots of skiing out here in Ontario, too, where I go to school. The mountains are smaller. But uh, yeah, it's really great. Really great snowboarding and skiing. All right, so winter sports, definitely mm -hmm. a big item. Okay. That's just another view um, looking down the hill at, uh, at Silver Star. So as you can see, there's lots and lots of mountains. I believe this is in the Monashi mountain range, which is near the Rocky Mountains. You guys might know that mountain range. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see if I can, I'm going to back up couple of slides. All right, so Mrs. Church's students want to know what is snowshoeing? So I'm going to grab my drawing tool and I'll, I'll point out some things that maybe you can kind of verbally walk us, walk us through it. Absolutely. So it's every, if you guys are watching over in Indiana, can you see these big giant things that they have on their feet? What are these called, Vanessa? Those are snowshoes, Brandon snowshoes and it looks to me like where they're standing at right here is kind of packed down but i know you guys get snow in indiana what happens when you walk in deep snow yeah exactly you need the you need those shoes for when the snow is really deep and um i think we get our love of snowshoeing from the uh from the native americans as well the indigenous cultures out here they used to snow shoe to get around so now it's a, it's a really big hobby for people you can go to sport check and you can choose your snowshoes and uh yeah people like to go snowshoe jogging <laughs> too which is kind of interesting but yeah it's a lot of fun right and so for some of you kids wondering um so if you have very deep snow that's not packed down which means it's uh it's it's very whenever you step into it and i know you guys get a lot of deep snow sometimes in indiana so when it snows a lot and you go stepping through snow that's really deep your head your feet make these holes they just sink right down into the snow and sometimes you can fall up to your hips or further if it's deeper and i, I believe the common terminology at least in uh, us is post holing um, when you walk through snow like that so with these large snowshoes they can walk across the snow here where it's not packed down and they will not post hole, mean, meaning their legs will not sink down really deep into the snow. All right. Okay, let's check out a couple of other pictures. Where, where's this uh, shot at? Um, that is Sentinel Pass in the Rocky Mountains. So we really like to go hiking, um, even in the winter, it does doesn't matter what season, but this is one of uh, one of my favorite hikes to go on. All right, and I'm I'm gonna stop right there for for just a second. And our classroom um, in Indiana, they want to know: Can you tell us about the animals in Canada? 
Um, uh, and I'm assuming they are talking about wild animals. Right. Um, the animals in Canada, maybe the ones you think about the most when you think about Canada are the moose. Um, those really big guys with the giant antlers, right? Uh, moose and beavers are everywhere out here. Lots of beaver dams on then, especially Eastern Canada. If you were to go to Newfoundland or Labrador, um, further east of Quebec, our French province, you'd see lots of moose um, running around, <laughs> almost like wild horses. Um, what else? What else? Lots of bears. Um, you guys have bears too, I think, but they roam into the cities here quite a bit. So we're always kind of on the lookout for bears. <laughs> right. And do you have in Eastern Canada, do you guys around Toronto anywhere? I know there's a uh, black, uh, I'm sorry, there's a grizzly or brown bear out where you grew up in British Columbia, but would you, would they be found on the East coast at all in Canada or no? Yeah, you would see them, I think, further, but we definitely have raccoons, which I think you guys also get. <laughs> right. And they're saying in Indiana, they, they don't have bears. So. Okay. Maybe yeah. that's good. <laughs> But I know they have raccoons. I was there last year, and they definitely have raccoons because I've seen them with my own eyes. All right, so um, let's go ahead and look at a look at a couple more. So I'll I'll bring these pictures back up for you. And what are we looking at here? Ah, uh, well, um, you guys could maybe guess what you think that is. It's called uh, the Floor Burger. It's a really famous art installation. I think it's actually an American artist, um, but it was on tour here in Toronto. And me and all my friends, um, we really love to go to the museum. We love to go to the art gallery. And Toronto is really great for art. So this is, was one of our favorite exhibits to go and see a giant hamburger on the floor. <laughs> And what is the, the, for our younger students that are watching, maybe they've never been to one, are you, what is the black tape on the floor for? That's a great question. You can't get too close to it, right? So you have to stand behind the black lines because it is a piece of art. So we don't want to get too close. All right. Okay, what are we looking at here? Uh, we are looking at a Blue Jays game from just a few weeks ago. I went and saw the Blue Jays play. Um, we really, really love baseball up here in Canada, but we only have one team. So <laughs> we, uh, we really try to support the Blue Jays um, as much as we can. And they're a Toronto team, so I like to go as often as possible. Um, I think you guys have a, way more baseball teams than we do. <laughs> right, right. But what, what would you say is the most popular sport in Canada? Mm, that would be ice hockey. Ice hockey, Brandon. Definitely, yeah, we love ice hockey. The Toronto Maple Leafs are the team out here. Um, they haven't done too well recently, but we're hoping this year, we're optimistic. All right, and I think we have a, a little video here. And so this is a rally. What are we gonna look at here? Um, you're going to look at some fancy cars. Uh, every year my dad likes to participate in something called the Dream Rally um, out in Kelowna, BC, where you raise money for a charity and you take, um, you take a young kid who's interested in cars and on a drive around um, the Okanagan Valley, which is this beautiful sort of scenic valley. And this is a video I took this past summer. Oh, cool. Is that a moose with a checkered flag there? Yes, that's uh, that's the only image of a moose I have. 
All right, and I think they're gonna, there we go. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, that sounds like a, a pretty awesome uh, charity event. I know I wish I would have gone in one of those cool cars uh, as well. So what's, um, let's see, they, they want to know what kind of, do you know what kind of cars any of these are or just that they're expensive fast cars? Um, there were lots of uh, Lamborghinis and Bentleys from what I remember, but it would be better if we could ask my dad. But yeah, I think a couple of the ones in the front were Lamborghinis. All right. And what are we looking at here? This looks pretty famous. Yeah, I think a lot of you maybe um, will find this image somewhat familiar. This is the Canadian view of Niagara Falls, which is about one hour outside of Toronto. All right, and Vanessa actually gave us a video to watch as well. And do you know, Vanessa, it, all of that looks like smoke coming up. Are those clouds or is that mist from the water? I think that's mist, Brandon, because uh, the water's so powerful, right? It's forcing that up. All right, and your mom and dad are famous now, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and um, open it up. It looks like our, our classrooms that were supposed to be on camera probably ran into some difficulties. I know our, our classroom from Mexico, they were on earlier and they have not returned. So if you guys want to just send in any and all questions you guys have in Indiana, we would love to answer them for you. Um, can you tell us about uh, taking a boat on the falls? So we saw, it looked like in the picture that there was uh, a lot of people in a boat there. Yeah, I think they have, um, they have two different boats. So there's a boat coming from the American side and there's a boat coming from the Canadian side. And those boats drive up to the bottom of the waterfall. You can get really close, right, right into the water there, right into the mist. Yeah, I think um, the American one is called the Maid of the Mist. And on the Canadian side, we have a horn blower. Cool. Did you did you go on one of those or did you just watch? I did. I did go on it. So you you walk all the way down the side of the cliff and you get down to the water. They put you on the boat and they give you um, sort of like a garbage bag jacket and you wear it over your head because you get completely soaked. Right. It's very, very wet in all that mist. Right. And um, do, you, do you actually recall like how much is it? a ticket to go on the boat? I think a ticket to go on the boat for an adult was about 20 Canadian dollars. So in American dollars, I'm, that's a good question because there's a difference, right? Right. And, and I'll look it up, but what I'm going to do is if you'll, um, I'm going to bring up a picture because I think this is really cool. And whenever I have people on the show and guests, it's really interesting to look at other money. I know I'm from the U.S., and as I travel, I, I love other people's money way more than ours because ours is so boring. It's all green. And let's look at what Canadian money looks like. All right. So there's your guy's money. And does any – obviously, I can see on the five notes – um, we have ice hockey. Obviously, ice hockey is is huge in Canada. Um, what about other famous people? Let's see. Who is this lady on your 20 note? That would be Queen Elizabeth II, because Canada still has a very close relationship with uh, the United Kingdom and its history there. So we, we like to keep her on our $20 bill. All right. And who... What about, do you know, who, who is this guy? 
I believe that's one of our first prime ministers, but Brandon, I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure who he is. Um, that's okay. I don't think I could tell you who everyone is uh, on ours. So it looks like currently one Canadian dollar equals about 76 U.S. cents. Mm. So that would be, you know, one U.S. dollar would, would be over one Canadian dollar. So, um, yeah, it's really good if people want to travel to, uh, to Canada from the United States. Your, your money can go a little bit further. Okay. People seem to love your, pri your current prime minister. Can you tell mm. us, what do you know about your current prime minister? Um, our current prime minister, Justin Trudeau, is very, he's very popular. He's quite young. Right? I think he's in his mid 40s. Um, yeah, I, I voted for him and I'm very proud to have voted for him. His father was also a prime minister who my mom voted for. Um, when she was my age. So um, I think there's sort of a family link there that everybody really likes. And he's very, um, very well spoken. He's actually, he actually has an English literature degree. So I, I really find that impressive. <laughs> All right. So I have a couple questions that were pre-submitted um, mm -hmm. to us. So they were not able to come today. But Roger from Pennsylvania uh, wants to know, how is the culture where you live different than the United States? Is there any, I know there's a lot of similarities, but is there anything that sticks out in your mind that is like really uniquely uh, Canadian or just completely different than the U S? Um, I think the Canadians, what would be really different, I think it's the influence of French culture on our country because we, uh, we all learn how to speak French in school growing up. We have a French province, Quebec, which is similar to having um, like an American state that is all French. So if you go to Quebec, which is the province just east of Ontario, all the signs change from English to French. And you have to speak in French when you order lunch at McDonald's or you order a coffee. Um, so I think that, uh, yeah, we really care a lot about European culture and keeping our link to European culture. And, and even, so even though you grew up in the, in Western Canada and British Columbia, you, it was required that you learn French? Yeah, we, I mean, I won't use it on a day-to-day -day basis as if I lived out in Eastern Canada. Here, I definitely get to use it a lot more. Now that I'm in Toronto, there's a lot of um, Quebecois people living in Toronto. There's a big French community. But out West, we, we learn it in school still until uh, high school. And you can decide if you want to keep it or leave it behind. All right. And our uh, Mrs. Church's classroom wants to know, um, do you go trick-or-treating in Canada? Mm -hmm. So Halloween's coming up shortly. That's a great question. Yeah, we do go trick-or-treating and we really love it. I think that's a similarity that we have with the United States and that you guys have really, really influenced us in terms of that kind of culture. So we love to go trick-or-treating. I always did growing up, definitely. All right. And let's see, let's go back. We had another pre-submitted question. And this one comes from Greg in Colorado. And he wants to know, what do you like about Canada? So I know it's kind of vague, but um, what are what are some of your favorite things about your country? That's a great question and a really difficult question. Um, hmm. If you're having a tough time, I'll I'll give you some prompts as far as categories. What about sure. your what about food? Because I, you know what, I don't even think besides like Canadian bacon, right? right. I don't even think I can name one dish that is like you that I know of as Canadian. What is, what is like Canadian home cooking like? I think it's similar in a lot of ways to British food. Um, so if you think about, um, we eat a lot of root vegetables, potatoes, and parsnips and turnips, <laughs> um, which is the British influence, right? But one of our favorite dishes, which is French Canadian, is poutine. So some of you might have heard of that, where you have um, kind of like French fries in a kind of boat shaped bowl and you pour gravy on it and then cheese curds. So pieces of cheese and they, and they melt with the gravy. That's one of our favorite dishes and you can get it at almost any restaurant in Canada. Well, I want that right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
so uh, let's see, while we're waiting on any other questions, I know sometimes uh, Mrs. Church's classroom uh, splits. Do you, do you guys still have your first class in there now? Or um, what do you, over, uh, over in Indianapolis? Or are you transitioning? Would you, in other words, would you like to play the Cahoots game now? And while I'm waiting on their answer, uh, what about, so I asked you about food. Right. What about music? Who right now is a famous, your most famous besides Justin Bieber? Uh, uh, besides Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than Justin Bieber, in Toronto, there's um, an artist called Drake, and people really, really like Drake. He's very popular, and he's very proud to be from Toronto. Um, his most recent album, if anyone has seen the cover, it's him sitting on the edge of, of the CN Tower, which is a really big tower in downtown Toronto. All right. And so, yeah, so uh, Drake is quite famous. And he's he was famous for any, any of you that are basketball fans, if you're watching. Um, there was, a, you know, he got a lot of coverage during the playoffs because he would go to all the Toronto Raptors games. And apparently, I'm sure saying really nice things to the players on the court. Um, <laughs> All right, so it, I'm not getting a response from Mrs. Church's classroom at the moment, so they're probably in between classes. Hmm. So <clears throat> what about um, school? So it kind of, not, not university, but think way back when, not too long ago, I don't think <laughs> when you were in grade school. What's, what's the Canadian school day look like when you were a little girl? Like when did, when you were in third grade or year three i don't know do you have grades you don't have grades do you we do we have grades so we have grade one to 12 but actually ontario the province i live in now used to have grade 13 but they recently got rid of it okay and so what would your school day look like as a third grader like what what time would was school start and what time did you get out of school um, third grade, I'll have to remember back, but we would start maybe, I would say just after 9am. So you take the, usually you take the bus to school because it's so far to get everywhere and Canadian cities are, are very spread out. So we would always take a bus for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, get to school around nine. Um, we'd have recess um, in the morning and in the afternoon. So there'd be recess around maybe 1030. I think we had about an hour for lunch and recess in the afternoon too. And I remember always getting home at about three thirty, maybe four o'clock. Three, four, and on the bus. Did you do any like after? I guess when you got older, um, this would be probably more applicable for high school. Um, did you in Canada? Do you have like sports teams in school? And if so, is that during school, after school? How does how does all that work? Um, we always have gym class, so you will go to gym class a couple of times a week. But you can also join teams, like um, there was a floor hockey team, I remember, in my elementary school that was really, really popular. Um, people would play ice hockey outside of school, so maybe um, with your siblings or just on the lake near your house. There's a lot of lakes here, so you could usually just walk to one <laughs> and go and play ice hockey. But yeah, floor hockey was really, really popular. All right. And um, and did you, did you guys, you have ice hockey in school? Um, some schools do. You'll have a rink beside the school um, if you're really lucky. My, my high school had a rink beside it. So you could just, you would just walk over for your gym period and uh, learn how to skate, sort of depending on your level. But basically all Canadians skate. So <laughs> kind of everyone knew how to play a little bit, even if you weren't, um, even if you weren't too competitive with it. All right. And again, I'll ask just in case they are back in the room or with another class, if Mitch's church's classroom is back, just let me know if you guys want to um, go ahead and play our Kahoot quiz or not. And 
as we're waiting from them. Um, also, what is, do you guys have like a national bird? For instance, we have the bald eagle. Do you have a national symbol? I guess, would it be the maple leaf or? Yeah, I think you have the, the maple leaf, um, maybe the beaver. <laughs> um, our, our national bird, I think, is a loon, which kind of is like, um, some, I don't know how to describe it, maybe between a, a small goose. <laughs> but they're actually on the loony, our coin. If um, the $1 coin, we call it a loony, and then the $2 coin, we call it a toonie. But it's called a loony because this loon is on the coin. Really, that's awesome. So yeah. the loon, the loon is one of my favorite birds. Um, oh, you'll know all about it then. Yeah. So <laughs> loons are awesome. They they have dense bones. They do not have hollow bones. They can dive to like 200 feet below the water, I believe, and they migrate out to the ocean. So they don't migrate south. So. And they, because they're heavy birds, they need a long runway to take off. So I think it's like a quarter mile or something. So they need a large body of water um, where they spend their summers. And they'll stay with their mate the whole summer. And oh. yeah, fascinating birds. And their, 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 their coats will change when they go out to the ocean as well. Um, super awesome birds. And they sound really cool in the morning when they do their loon calls. Yeah, they really do. So yeah, so we will have we'll have a show. We have a virtual field trip of Maine wildlife coming up here in about a month or so that we'll talk about the loon. So pretty cool stuff. All right. Well, um, what we're gonna do is I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and just play our quiz for um, for those of watching the recording in the future and catching up with us on demand. And then we'll see if Ms. Church's classroom uh, has any other questions. And if not, then we'll go ahead and wrap up today's show. So without further ado, again, you can go to kahoot.it and uh, enter in the ID 456921. Again, 456921, and you'll be linked right up. And I'm going to give everyone about 10 more seconds and turn on that groovy Kahoot music. Boom. Lay that one down, Drake. <laughs> That's Where good. That beat? All right. We're going to start in five, four, three, two. Okay. Vanessa gave us some trivia questions. In Eastern Canada, it's common to buy milk in bottles, buckets, plastic bags, or wheelbarrows. All right. Oh, not bottles, plastic bags. Mm -hmm. so you guys, is that in Toronto too, or like a Quebec thing? No, it's definitely in Toronto, Ontario. You buy all your milk in a, a plastic bag about this, about the size of, um, yeah, your arm maybe, half of your arm. And you buy a little jug that you slide the bag into, and you just cut the edge of the bag and pour out of it. Now, are you talking like, I'm, I'm sure something more like thicker than like a little sandwich bag? A little bit thicker, but not much. Not oh, much. Okay. It feels a lot like a, a, lot like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> so like, are you ever scared just putting that in a grocery bag taking it home like it's gonna pop yeah you have to be careful because yeah you could drop them and they pop or if you cut the hole too big in the corner of the bag when you go to pour it it just there's milk everywhere so oh, wow there you go milk in plastic bags all right how many cities has Vanessa lived in how many cities one city Five, ten, or fifteen. Ooh, ten cities. Are these all in Canada? No, they're not all in Canada. Um, two of them are in Scotland. I lived in Glasgow and Aberdeen, and one of them is in South Korea in Yeoju. Oh, Yeoju. Mm -hmm. I used to live there. I wonder why how we met. <laughs> 
write a letter to Santa Claus, North Pole, ho, 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 and Santa will write you back in Canada. Is that true or false? That is true. Did you did you ever have you ever written Santa a letter in Canada? Always, every year, every year. Got to write Santa, and he'll write you back. He's a nice guy. Yeah, there you go. And you were saying you can do this in any language as well, so not just English or French. Absolutely, any language, and he'll write you back. That Santa knows. You think he knows Hangul? I, I believe so. I believe it. Yeah. How much of Earth's fresh water is in Canada? Five percent, thirteen percent, twenty percent, or one hundred percent? I don't think they have all the water. Maybe not. Oh, twenty percent. Twenty percent. And what you were saying something else about the lakes? Canada has how many lakes, Vanessa? Well, I I can't remember how many, but we we have or, the most most in the world, I believe. All right, the most lakes in the world. So that would make a lot of sense why you guys uh, really like ice hockey. It's really <laughs> yeah. long winters and lots of frozen lakes. Yeah, I think All it's right. that we have the most lakes combined out of any country, something like that. Okay, and how many pet hedgehogs did Vanessa have growing up? Zero, three, nine, or 33? Whoa, she had three, not 33. Can you imagine if she had like oh. a hedgehog farm? That would be awesome. <laughs> it would be awesome. So did yeah. you have three hedgehogs yeah. at one time or were these spaced out over your childhood? Um, I had, we had two at one time and then one a little bit later. Yeah, they're really friendly. Really great, uh, really great house pets. When you say we, you mean like you had one and your sister had one? Yeah, we had them together. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what were their names? Pop quiz. Oh, there was um, Sarah and Rose and Miss Muppet. <laughs> Miss Muppet. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Red Rims is today's winner. Um, so Mrs. Church's classroom, and I'm going to get their address, and uh, Vanessa is going to send them a postcard from Canada. How cool is that? That's right. Just make sure you get the international postcard stamp or it won't leave. <laughs> <laughs> it won't leave. That's true. All right. So if we do not see any other questions come in, um, we'll give about uh, another minute for that, and, and then we'll wrap up. Um, but I have some questions while we wait. So earlier we were talking about a um, – the government as far as the prime minister so the current prime minister is is very popular in canada so in the u.s for example our president serves for four years in canada how long does your prime minister serve for prime minister can serve uh, as long as they want i believe it's until we call another election so there's no set period of time and I mean, how does that happen? Can you just walk out in the street and say, hey, call an election. I don't like this guy. Or like who who's in charge of calling the election? I believe it's the other. Um, so you'll have a min majority or a minority government. It's the house in the House of Commons. They decide um, based on a voting system on whether or not they need to call another election. Right. And what is so in Canada? In the U.S., for example, because most of our classrooms at Wash are watching from the U.S., and we are accustomed to two parties. So we have the Democrats and the Republicans. Is, in Canada, is that similar? Do you have more parties, or do you have two? Like, what, what's kind of common in Canada? We have multiple parties. It's not such a, it's not really a two party system as much. I would say there's, there's the Liberal Party, which is in power right now with Justin Trudeau. But there's also the NDP, that's the New Democratic Party. Um, they're similar to the Liberals, um, maybe a bit further left, I guess, on the political spectrum. We have the Conservative Party as well. Um, and we have the Green Party, which is gaining a lot of uh, popularity and they care a lot about the environment 
management and um, controlling sort of fossil fuel emissions, different things like that. So that's gaining a lot of popularity recently. And all right. <clears throat> well, it looks like our uh, classrooms had to run and that is okay. So we're gonna go ahead because we're at 45 minutes anyways. And I'm going to go ahead and say thank you very much, Vanessa, for joining us today. And thank you. All right. And as we go, because um, I'll do this for our recording as well. So I'm going to share our screen. And I'm going to play with, with me, up oh, with you and I. All right. Mrs. Church's class is saying thank you. So they are still around. And since they are, we're going to play a quick little game. And feel free over Mrs. Church's classroom. Um, we are going to learn some Canadian slang. Uh, mm. And so just like Vanessa was telling us earlier, so they do speak English in Canada, if you haven't noticed this whole show, and, and, uh, and French. But they do use, as we've learned on many of our guest speaker shows, a lot of countries that speak English around the world they will use different words that we use here in the US. So the first one is bunny hug. So if you guys are still watching, do you have a guess of what bunny hug means in Canada over Mrs. Church's classroom? And I'll give you about 10 seconds to, they say hello. So they are guessing hello. And what does bunny hug actually mean in Canada, Vanessa? Um, a bunny hug is, is like a hoodie, like um, a big sweater that you pull over your head and it's got the hood on top. That's what All we right. call it. So a hoodie, a bunny hug. So if it's cold outside in Indianapolis today, don't forget your bunny hug. That's right. All right. Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Am I saying that correctly? Chesterfield? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Do you guys have any guesses in Mrs. Church's classroom? What is a Chesterfield? I guess I just gave you a hint, so it's a noun. Mm. Something, something to do with golf, they say. Ooh, that's a really good guess. A really good guess, but it's actually Canadian for couch. All right, couch or sofa. Yeah. All right, Chesterfield. So do you say, uh, save me a seat on the Chesterfield? Is that would be normal protocol? Yeah, absolutely. Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm not gonna try to say this. Can, can you pronounce this for us? Uh, that's toque. 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 So what do you guys think over in Mrs. Church's class? What does toque mean? They say a purse. Oh, a purse, you're close. It's like a clothing accessory. It's, um, what do you call those hats, Brandon? Like a, like a beanie? Uh, oh, I thought you were picking on me. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so. So in the U.S., most people today call those beanies. So a winter hat. A winter hat is a beanie. I thought Vanessa was picking on me because, um, you know, I'm from North Carolina, and in the South, we call them toboggans, and, <laughs> which is going to be very funny for our Canadian friend because apparently a toboggan is a sled or a type of sled. I don't it's know. Toboggan. We don't, we, don't get a, we don't get a lot. Of, see, that's a, that's a difference. It's, it's a different pronunciation. It's, it's toboggan. It's not toboggan is, is what I would call the winter hat. All right. So, right. but now I'm, I'm going to start calling it a teak. Was a toque. A toque. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. I can't call there. it. You're getting there. Okay. A, all right. A double-double. All right. Do you guys Ooh. have a guess in Indiana? What does double-double mean? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with um, maybe, oh, okay. Well, they're saying jump rope. I think that's a good guess. That is a, that is a good guess, but it's actually what we call a, a cup of coffee that has two creams and two sugars. All right, and specifically Tim Hortons. And mm -hmm. I know, I think in Indiana, do you guys have Tim Hortons? Or maybe it was Ohio that I... I saw Tim Hortons. I don't. I don't recall. It's definitely, t definitely Ohio. So they say no, but they have Starbucks. So if you guys um, in Indiana, so Tim Hortons is like your Starbucks, right? They're just everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Right. 
or I'm currently in New England, it would be like our Dunkin' Donuts. Um, okay. And as far as like Double Double and fast food related, when I first saw this, I was thinking for anyone watching from California uh, or Arizona, Nevada area is uh, in and out Burger. So Double Double is a, oh. uh, the code word. So Double Double is a double cheeseburger. So you go and ask for Double Double. All right. Um, runners. Runners. Do you have a guess for what runners refers to in Indiana? Uh, runners. That's what I call my students when they leave the classroom. <laughs> um, ooh, they're saying a snowmobile. Wow, a snowmobile. You that might be, be. That would be cool. I would yeah, call my snowmobile a... runner. <laughs> that's a great idea just to get around um you could wear runners while you're on a snowmobile runners are like sneakers or trainers okay so like running shoes or yeah. uh, sneakers all right so there you have it so you guys over in indiana you you know how to speak like a canadian now so there you go and do you guys have any um questions before we let Vanessa go or are you questioned out there were some good questions today there, was there some were good some good questions and these guys want to know I'm gonna put on my toque and my runners go for a walk right and, and while they're thinking there I have another question um, about Canada's school system. So like when you, is it more common for kids to bring their lunch or do you eat school lunch? Does school provide lunch in Canada? In, um, in elementary school, everyone brings their own lunch for sure. Yeah, you would bring your own lunch. Maybe there'd be a breakfast program at the school so you could go and have breakfast there, but you would probably bring your own lunch. We don't really do cafeterias until middle school or high school. All right. And so they want to know, so now they've switched over to a fifth and sixth grade club. So Ooh. they're not our, our third graders any longer. And they want to know um, a little bit more about food. So they may have missed our earlier uh, discussion on food. Um, what, let's, let's, let's go fast food right now. So like what's, what's would be like, um, is there any, do you guys have like U.S. fast food chains or do you have more of your own? Like what's that landscape look like? We have a lot of U.S. fast food chains and everyone gets really excited here when a new U.S. food chain comes to Canada uh, because we don't have, um, we don't really have very many of our own. One thing that we really like out here in Ontario though that's Canadian is something called Beaver Tails. Um, so it's like a, uh, you guys might have them down there, though, where it's like a big pastry shaped like a beaver's tail. And you can get all sorts of um, sweet and savory sort of candy or bacon or maple syrup poured on top of it. It's a giant pastry and you eat it. Mm. That sounds delicious. It's good. And, <clears throat> and so what, what would be in earlier, what I would say, let's answer it this way, because I'm going to pose the question a little bit differently. If... If you're going home and you can say you can use your grandmother or your mother because not everyone's uh, is is a big cook, but uh, whoever like is your go to cook in your family, what is like your number one requested home cooked meal? So when you go to like a family holiday or anything like that, what is uh, what is Vanessa request? I I always request my mom's mac and cheese, but that's not very Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and and then uh, what what about holidays? So I know you guys, you just celebrated a holiday, or am I jumping the gun here? No, you're right. We just had a Canadian Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving. All right, and so you guys are a little bit before us. So this is your harvest celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do a lot of the same things. I think turkey and everything with your family, but it's not a it's not a shopping holiday. There's no Black Friday. 
All right. <clears throat> okay, well, do you guys have any other questions in Mrs. Church's classroom? And and they were saying, by the way, it, it, the beaver tail sounds amazing, which it does. Oh, it is, it definitely is. If you ever get the chance. All right, well, we're gonna, if they come up with another question, we'll, we'll answer it, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the recording for all of our on-demand viewers. Thank you for watching the show, and we wanna give uh, Miss Vanessa a big old thank you, and great to have you on the show, and um, telling us a little bit about Canada. And if you want to learn more about our future guest speakers and or virtual field trips, you can learn all about those at learnaroundtheworld.com. I'm G.O.B., and this is Vanessa, and you've been watching Learn Around the World's Meet a Local. Thanks Bye for guys. watching the show, guys. Until next time, keep exploring.